Hello everyone, welcome to 10 Minute Physiology. In today's video, we're going to talk about how sodium chloride is reabsorbed in the loop of Henle. So with that, let's give it a go. So before we talk about how sodium chloride is reabsorbed in the loop of Henle, let's bring up the diagram that we're going to be using today. So the first part of our diagram is of course going to be the epithelial cells that make up the tubule lining. So the tubules of the nephron are made up of epithelial cells. And these epithelial cells basically divide two compartments. The first compartment is the tubule lumen, which is present inside the nephron. And then we have the interstitial space, which is present outside the nephron. Now the membranes of each of these epithelial cells basically has a name. So the membrane that is facing the tubule lumen is going to be called the apical membrane. And then the main membrane that is facing the interstitial space is called the basolateral membrane. So now that we understand the diagram we're using, let's talk about how sodium chloride is reabsorbed in the loop of Henle. So let's begin with our first segment, the thin descending limb of Henle. So how is sodium chloride reabsorbed in the thin descending limb of Henle? Well, if you were to look at a sodium ion, what would happen is, is, is that if the sodium ion were in the tubule, the sodium ion would basically bounce off the epithelial cells. And the reason why is because the thin descending limb of Henle is highly permeable to water, but it's impermeable to salt. So as a result of this, very little to no sodium chloride reabsorption takes place in the thin descending limb of Henle. So now let's talk about the next segment of the loop of Henle, specifically the thin ascending limb of Henle. So the thin ascending limb of Henle is only present in juxta glomerular nephrons. So these are the nephrons that dive deep into the kidney. So how does sodium chloride get reabsorbed in the thin ascending limb of Henle? So in the thin ascending limb, we basically have cells that are very permeable to sodium chloride, but impermeable to water. So sodium chloride reabsorption in this case is going to take place via passive diffusion and paracellular pathways. So that's how sodium chloride is reabsorbed in the thin ascending limb of Henle. So now let's talk about the most important part of the loop of Henle, specifically the thick ascending limb of Henle. And we're going to start off with the transcellular mechanism by how sodium chloride is reabsorbed. So powering a lot of the transport mechanisms that basically transport sodium chloride is going to be the sodium potassium pump. So the sodium potassium pump pumps three sodiums out of the cell into the interstitial space and two potassiums into the cell. And it accomplishes this by hydrolyzing ATP and using the energy released by that hydrolysis to drive these uphill movements. So the NKP, or the sodium potassium pump, is going to be incredibly important in establishing electrochemical gradients that are used by secondary active transporters to transport sodium and chloride into the cell. So the first secondary active transporter is going to be NKCC2. This is going to co-transport sodium, potassium, and two chlorides into the cell from the tubule lumen. So basically what NKCC2 does is it uses the energy released by moving sodium down its electrochemical gradient and chloride down its electrochemical gradient to drive the uphill movement of potassium into the cell. So this is basically going to be one of the main mechanisms by how sodium and chloride is reabsorbed transcellularly. In addition to NKCC2, we also have a very important channel called the ROMK channel. So the ROMK channel basically takes the potassium that the NKCC2 brought in and it recycles it so it keeps powering this co-transporter. So this recycling mechanism is very important. So in addition to NKCC2, we also have the sodium hydrogen exchange protein, specifically NHE3. So what this does is it basically couples the energetic downhill movement of sodium to the energetic uphill movement of hydrogen ions. So it brings one sodium ion in and one hydrogen ion out. So this is going to be the second mechanism by how sodium is reabsorbed by the cell. So now that we have both sodium and chloride inside the cell, how do we bring them to the interstitial space? Well, for chloride, we basically have two main transcellular mechanisms. The first is going to be the potassium chloride co-transporter. This basically couples the energetic downhill movement of potassium to the energetic uphill movement of chloride. 
So it basically moves one potassium out and one chloride out. In addition to this, we also have chloride channels. These chloride channels will allow chloride to move into the interstitial space as well. Now, in addition to these things, we also have a potassium channel, which allows potassium to flow out of the cell as well. So that's basically the transcellular mechanisms by how sodium chloride is reabsorbed. So on the apical membrane, once again, we have NKCC2 bringing in sodium, potassium, and chloride, and NH3 bringing in sodium. So then on the basolateral membrane, we have the sodium-potassium pump, which brings sodium from the inside of the cell to the interstitial space. And we have the potassium chloride co-transporter and chloride channels, which allows chloride to go into the interstitial space. So that's basically how sodium chloride is going to be reabsorbed by this segment of the loop of Henle. So now that we know the transcellular mechanisms, let's talk about the paracellular mechanisms. So inside the tubule lumen of the thick ascending limb, we have a very positive voltage. As a result, this is going to repel sodiums. And sodiums are able to move across the tubule lining paracellularly into the interstitial space. So it's very important to note that around 50% of sodium reabsorption is going to take place via this paracellular mechanism. So this is a very big portion of sodium reabsorption. So we have sodium reabsorption taking place via this paracellular mechanism here. Now, a very important thing to note is that the thick ascending limb of Hemli is often called the diluting segment. And the reason why is because the thick ascending limb is going to be permeable to sodium chloride. It reabsorbs sodium chloride, but it doesn't reabsorb water. As a result, water remains in the tubule and you have sodium chloride being removed from that water. As a result, the osmolality goes down and the fluid inside the tubule dilutes. So this is why the thick ascending limb is called the diluting segment. So that's it for this video. I hoped it helped you understand how sodium chloride is reabsorbed in the loop of Henle, and I hope to see you in the next video. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you next time.